Hi! Thanks so much for joining me on the Soap Queen TV set. As you can see, today I'm making rebatch soap. I'm right in the middle of it, and here's how I got to this step. Rebatching soap is cold process soap that's been pre-made. It means you get all the goodness of cold process soap, ingredients you can control, all natural, without having to deal with lye. Rebatching soap is often referred to as double milled, triple milled, or even French milled soap. When you get rebatch soap, you can either make it yourself or you can buy it from a vendor. When you buy it from Brambleberry, it comes pre-mixed and pre-grated for you, or else you can get it in a big block and just grate and grate and grate. Earlier, I took my double boiler and I filled water in the bottom pan just until it was barely touching the bottom of the pan. This is because when it gets to a rolling boil, we don't want the water to go boiling over the sides. This double boiler cost me about $30 at a kitchen supply store, but if you don't have a double boiler and don't want to invest in one, you can get the double boiler maker from Brambleberry that lets you put one little pot inside one big pot and have space to make your own at-home DIY double boiler. Since rebatching soap is all natural, I want to take advantage of that all natural moniker and use essential oils. So I'm using pink grapefruit essential oil mixed with lemon essential oil. This is pot marigold, also known as calendula. It's considered very soothing and gentle on the skin and it provides nice texture in the soap. This is annatto seed infused into sweet almond oil. I let the annatto seed sit in the sweet almond oil for over a week. And look at this, it's such a deep, red color. I'm going to be using this collapsible wooden two pound mold from Brambleberry. Brambleberry.com has a template for you so you can cut out the lining easily. No guesswork involved. I assembled my mold earlier while I was waiting for the soap to melt. basic rebatch base, you can add as much liquid as you want, but when you add more liquid, it takes longer to dry the soap out and for it to get hard, and any extra oils you add inhibit lather. So make sure you're thinking of the trade-off between really liquid soap that you can glop into the mold easily and soap that takes too long to dry or doesn't lather well enough. If you don't want to sit over your double boiler and baby your soap like I am, there's other ways you can do this. You could use a heat safe plastic baggie and put it in boiling water and then use oven mitts on your hands to squish that soap up and really mix it in and then glop that into your molds. Or you can put the soap in a slow cooker, walk away for an hour and come back stirring it every so often. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. In this case, I like using the double boiler because I can control the heat, I can control all my ingredients and I can watch everything. My soap has been melting for over 25 minutes. It should be pretty close to ready. Let's check it out. Ah, oh, yeah, it's looking good. Earlier I put a full three tablespoons of water in here just to help speed up the process. And now I'm going to color and fragrance this. Remember, I decided to use grapefruit and lemon essential oil. It smells great. Stir this in and if you want, you can put this in the molds right now, or I'm going to be adding some color. I'm going to use my annatto seed infused sweet almond oil for color. Mix that in really well. Notice how the oil makes it more liquidy. It's time to take this and glop it into our molds. Are you ready? Notice how thick and viscous this is. It's kind of like mashed potatoes. When the mold is halfway filled, smack it. Smack it down hard. You want to get rid of any extra air bubbles in the bottom. Now, finish filling the rest of the mold. 
I have about one pound left in my double boiler and I'm going to use it to show you how to use individual soap molds with rebatch. For this one, let's add some herbs. Calendula or pot marigold will make a perfect addition to our natto seed colored soap. For this, I'm going to be using one of our heavy duty molds made by Elf Industrial and also be using a food container. So if you don't have any molds at home, it's okay. Just use a food container and you can get a great DIY soap mold. Now that everything is mixed in, I'm going to glop this into my elf molds. I love using these heavy duty elf molds because they can withstand up to 165 degrees and this rebatching base can get pretty hot. Once you've glopped the soap into the molds, tap, tap, tap. Tap on the counter, get any extra air bubbles out. Now you can leave it like this and on the back it's kind of rustic looking or you can do my trick and take some plastic wrap and just put it over the back and smooth out the back of that soap mold. And I have a little bit of soap left so I'm just going to put it into my plastic food container and tap, tap, tap. There it is. A wonderful looking bar of soap. Now if you're like me and you hate soap scraps and you don't want to waste anything, check out what you can do with the very little bits in the bottom of the container. Look at that. It's a nice little soap ball. I'm just going to roll it in the extra calendula. It sticks in there great. Just to show you what your rebatch soap will look like, I made this three days ago so I could show you how great your soap was going to turn out. Ideally, you should wait two to three days for your soap to harden up before cutting it. And remember, any extra liquids you added add to the time it takes for your soap to harden and dry out. Take the little wing nuts on the side, gently loosen them, and pull up the tape, and then pull your soap out. Take a very sharp kitchen knife and slice carefully and evenly. Now, if your cutting challenge, Brambleberry has a specific cutter with special notches just for this soap mold to help guide your knife along into a straight path. Look at this soap. It's rustic, it's country chic, it looks great, it's 100% natural, and you made an all natural soap without having to mess around with lye. Don't you feel good? I've popped my soap out of my two pound mold, and now I wanna show you how easy it is to get it out of the e.l.f. heavy duty mold. Check this out. Just take the mold, flip it over on its back, and press gently with the palm of your hand. You can feel it pop out. If the soap isn't popping out, this is not worth ruining your soap mold. Wait an extra couple of days or freeze your soap completely solid and then it should pop out really easily. Thanks so much for watching Soap Queen TV today as I taught you how to make rebatching soap. It's a great way to get all the benefits of cold process, all natural soap without the four to six week cure time. Until next time, happy soaping. I assembled mine earlier while I was waiting for the soap to melt. It did a lot of things too. <laughs> <laughs>